This is the fifth state winning headlines. Your media police post coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya, from the Fort Hall School of Government. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning. But we also take a look at some of the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 5th of July, 2022. And I am 2M. I am AX. And I am JM. In case you missed the headlines this morning, here they are in the Daily Nation. Polls, battle of the IT gurus mm. in the standard. Yep. Paul. Karua's big impact. Mm -hmm. In the star, Ruto, I did three meetings daily as Uhuru slept. Mm -hmm. And in the people daily, IEBC clears 16,000 to vie. Any comments on the headlines? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Tuem, kick us off. Absolutely. Today we want to tell William Ruto a story. It is a story about former Ghanaian president, Jerry Rawlings. Yes. See, Rawlings was permanently irritated. Mm -hmm. One day, his deputy president started talking nyoko nyoko during a cabinet meeting. Mm -hmm. Irritated by this, Rawlings stood up and beat him up thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Angered by the beating, the deputy president drove to the police station and reported the president. Mm -hmm. The officer at the OB desk told the DP to write a statement and go home and nurse his injuries. Mm -hmm. Later on that afternoon, the officer who recorded the statement was promoted. The deputy president could do nothing about his situation. What's the point of my story? Mm -hmm. If William Ruto thinks he can slap his boss and get away with it, he is playing with fire. Mm -hmm. In fact, he is attracting Praetorian conditions upon himself. Mm -hmm. And that's because President Uhuru Kenyatta is not just his boss. He is commander-in-chief of Jeshi. Mm -hmm. Jeshi can beat up that chief hustler and tell him to go report to his Kikuyu hustlers. In fact, Jeshi can beat William Ruto up to a pulp, then court-martial him and send him to prison. And his hustler nation will do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. But I have another thought. If you thought Ruto's utterances are a projection of strength, then think again. And that's because Sanzu in the Art of War teaches us when strong appear weak, mm -hmm. when weak appear strong, who yes. knows he's weak. And just a few days, ICC could issue an arrest warrant for him. Mm -hmm. In fact, on Monday last week, ICC prosecutors told us that they have evidence that Ruto's actual phone mm -hmm. is linked to witness tampering. Mm -hmm. My goodness. If ICC issues that arrest warrant, Buona Ruto, pray very hard. Uhuru doesn't hand you over to ICC mm -hmm. because if he does, William Ruto will find himself in orange jumpsuits sharing soap with Charles Taylor <laughs> and Bosco <laughs> Ntanganda. <laughs> Therefore, Buona Ruto, Pana Tisha Rice, he is not your equal. The man has a Moy cookbook of politics hidden under his bed. Mm -hmm. Uhuru will do you before you do him. That's right. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So today I would like to take the working DK to school. He claimed that Uhuru Kenyatta wanted to give the presidency to Mudavadi in 2013 because he was afraid. Yeah. But what this good professor is ignorant about is that Uhuru was playing games with Mudavadi. Yes. He told him, I will give you the presidency as a way of locking him out of the process in the office of the Registrar of Political Parties. Right. And Mudavadi fell for it. Mm -hmm. But the man who needs to be educated even more is William Ruto. Mm -hmm. He told us he wants to slap the commander in chief. Does he know what would have hmm. happened to him had he done that? Hmm. Hmm. All his fake teeth would have fallen off from the blows he would have received. Yes. And he would have been walking around as a mapengo from the blows he would have received. Yes. And that is why he is lying. Yeah. Very early in the Jubilee administration, Ruto's plan was to undermine Uhuru Kenyatta so that he can look good. He told us that when Uhuru was sleeping, he was busy running government. Mm. But the truth of the matter is, Ruto was nowhere close to real power. Mm. He only saw real power through the mirror and TikTok. Mm -hmm. And that is why he became a saboteur. Mm. I'm even ready to bet that Ruto was behind the nullification of the 2017 election. Mm. Because after nullification, who looked bad? Mm. It was Uhuru Kenyatta, not Ruto. Mm. During Jubilee's first term, everything that made Uhuru look bad tended to also also make Ruto look good. <coughs> the terror attack on Westgate, yeah. Dusit and Garissa made Uhuru look bad mm. and Ruto look good. Yeah. And so the question we beg is this, 
who was behind these terror attacks. Yeah. The beneficiary of the terror attacks, according to the Qui Bono Doctrine in law, is the chief suspect. That's right. right. For William Ruto, getting power by any means necessary is his modus operandi. Right. He will lie, he will cheat, and he will negotiate with the devil himself to get to power. Yeah. And if along the way people are persuaded to die to get him to power, he will say it is okay. But for Uhuru Kenyatta, country is more important than power. That's right. Mm. And that is why Ruto does not understand him. It is why giving up power to benefit country is unthinkable for William Ruto. Mm. Worse for him, it is an act of cowardice. Mm. But I would argue the true cowardice is using others to realize your ambitions. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I'd like to reflect on the state of our elections, yeah. the state mm. of the contest. Right. Elections are primarily about two things. Yes. Number one, an organizing principle, mm -hmm. and number two, an object of aggression. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number one, an organizing principle. And by this, I mean the ideology that influences how people vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. In America, for instance, people vote according to their party affiliation. The Democrats are liberal, left-leaning, whereas the Republicans are conservative, right-leaning. Mm -hmm. And the same logic applies across m most of Europe and the Global North, right. where people group themselves for politics according to their religious affiliation or class structure or other pertinent issues such as environment or at all these labor. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, in Kenya, our voter behavior is and continues to be motivated primarily by ethnicity. Yes. That is, we vote to preserve and perpetuate our ethnic interests. Mm -hmm. And the question on the mind of many is, will this change in 2022? Mm -hmm. Will Wajakoya, for instance, shift the paradigm by molding a new voter base consisting of the youth, regardless of their ethnic grouping? Mm -hmm. Put differently, how many of the 10.9 million voters aged between 18 to 35 mm -hmm. will decide to take off their ethnic hats and put on their issue-based hats. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the answer to this question is, you know, is maybe, perhaps, it mm. could happen. Right. How, out of the 10.9 million, if voter turnout is projected at 71%, 7.7 mm -hmm. million youth voters will come out in August. Citeris Paribas, mm. Wadrakoya is likely to get 1.5% or 115,000. Mm -hmm. uh, as 1.5 percent of those 7.7 .7 million mm -hmm. okay. and that is going solely by history mm -hmm. the 1.5 is what the all the fringe candidates combined got mm -hmm. in 2013 mm -hmm. 1.5 percent yes. that is Whoa. Dida, Kiyapi, Whoa. Martha Caron, Peter Kenneth. Now worth of note is that this 1.5 percent that he's going to receive it mm -hmm. won't be from Riley Stronghold mm -hmm. but primarily from Central Kenya yes. from Ruto's stronghold, yes. primarily again in urban areas. Mm -hmm. So he is a man to watch. If he puts in more effort in Central, he will get even more than that 1.5%. Absolutely. Absolutely. Number two, an object of aggression. This is what elections are also mm. about. Elections mm -hmm. are inherently about issues. The 2022 contest has been framed as a contest between transactional politics and transformational politics. Yes. Mm. If there's one thing Kenyans, and in particular Kikuyus, have made clear, is that we have a distinct preference for transactional politics. Mm -hmm. And transactional politics here simply means a laser fair government as far as running businesses and paying taxes are concerned. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kenyans have seen the fruits of transformational politics, mm -hmm. whose politics of transformation has been about expansion of the road, rail, and port infrastructure, mm -hmm. and about healthcare, and all these other um, social security right. uh, se uh, yeah. uh, setups. Correct. This will have a mega impact on the macroeconomic prospects of the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what Kenyans wanted, I think even more than this, was a little bit of transactional politics. Yes. Kenyans want to get away without paying taxes, levies, and duties. They want to pay bribes where they can. They want to under-declare the worth of their imported goods, those goods that they'll go and hawk somewhere. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, banks want to do overnight lending without the watchful eye of CBK. They want to break a few rules mm -hmm. to make the extra buck. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, that is what Ruto is promising, a return mm -hmm. to chaos and disorder. Mm -hmm. And that is why he has gained traction 
particularly amongst the Kikuyu. Mm -hmm. yeah. As far as object of aggression is concerned, therefore, transformational politics has become the object of aggression. Mm -hmm. But then, as Kemal Ataturk said, when it comes to the masses, never give in to their demands. The people, he said, don't know what they need. Hence why, he says, for the people, despite the people. Correct. Ruto and Rigadi, truth be told, will take us 10 steps back. Oh, yes. Baba and Martha will continue this Uhuru legacy of transformational politics. And is this good for country? No. Better than that, it is the right path, the only path that the country should take. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, we had a four, four headlines here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gravitating towards the standard. Absolutely. Yeah. Same here. Paul, Karua's big impact. Yep. Oh, yes. So I think we can uh, toss the rest, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Toss that. Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. Just left with the standard. And um, I think that brings us to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We're also on your TV screens. Find us on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Find me on TikTok at Mainawa Kagema. <laughs> find <laughs> you me on, uh, on Twitter mm -hmm. at K Maina and on TikTok at Kanda Bongo. And you can find me on your screens at the Fifth Estate. Fantastic, fantastic. Have a good night.